cut it off. Okay. Welcome everyone. Did we all make it through whatever we were doing? I'm so happy to be here. Um, and so happy to see lots of new faces too. It's always fun to teach to a new group. So we are going to work today with one of the goddesses from the yoga tradition. Her name is Lakshmi. She's actually on this pole right here. So as you leave today, you can turn around and check out Lakshmi. Lakshmi is the goddess. She comes from the yogic Vedic tradition. She's the goddess of abundance, prosperity, light, beauty, pleasure, all the good stuff. And the story about how Lakshmi came into, um, there's all these myths and stories about how the different gods and goddesses appear in the yoga tradition. But I especially like her story in that the forces of dark and the forces of light were in sort of this big um, back and forth duel because they had heard that there was a, a very specific nectar that if you found this nectar, not only would it give you immortality, but it would give you everything you ever desired. So there was a sort of big fight back and forth between the light and the dark. And they knew that they would never be able to get to this nectar without each other. And so the light and the dark started to stir this big pot, stir, 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 stir. It took them a thousand years. So it was a long time. <laughs> they hung in there for a long time. And out of this stirring eventually came this beautiful goddess named Lakshmi. And of course, the dark wanted her and the light wanted her. And she said, no, I will choose. I get to choose. And she chose the path of love. So the reason I wanted to teach on Lakshmi today is I think she's such a, she, she brings such beautiful energy, but it's this idea as we're coming to the end of 2023, there was a lot of dark. Yeah. And there's a lot of light too. So this is sort of uh, the yoga tradition has taught me so much about this balance between honoring that there will be dark and there will be light. The Buddhists say we will have 10,000 joys and 10,000 sorrows in one lifetime. So we get it all in this lifetime. And so Lakshmi teaches that, you know, we have to actually be able to see the dark as well as the light and be willing to kind of stir up the pot, so to speak. And then out of it can come great beauty and prosperity if we choose the path of love. So in today's practice, we're going to do a lot of stirring up of the hips today because this is, she would say, Lakshmi is the goddess of the sacral region, the sacrum, the pelvis, the hips, plus post-holidays. It's really good to get those hips open back up. All right. We will work this morning. We're not this morning. I was teaching the morning. So that's mm -hmm. just popped out of my head. We will work this afternoon with Usha's mudra. So you take your fingers and you just lightly bring the fingers together. So the inner, the fingers are just interlaced very loosely. And then you just drop that down into your lap, palms face up. All right, allow yourself to rock forward and back a little bit, maybe side to side a little bit. So just get some movement until you find a spot where you'd like to settle. Often when our weight is settled directly over the sit bones, so we're anchoring down through the sit bones into the earth, that's when we often feel the most, I would call it beautiful balance. So when we're anchored over our sit bones, rooting down so that we can really rise up nice and tall, but see if you can find that spot in your own body. And then let's collectively take a nice deep breath in. And as you exhale, feel those shoulders start to drop. Feel yourself begin to settle a little deeper into your seat. We're going to do this again. Nice deep breath in. Mm, exhale, let yourself ground and settle. Just letting all parts of you arrive here on the yoga mat. One more of those nice full deep breaths in. 
And as we land here together in this space, just an invitation that all of you is welcome. Any emotion, any thought, any feeling. And so we practice together for, I always find such enhanced energy when I'm practicing with others. And yet we are here today for ourselves to really clear, open, and be in deeper study of ourself in this next hour. So let your awareness now just settle down into this hand position, Usha's Mudra, that I introduced at the start of class. Just take a moment. When we hold mudra like this, it shifts very subtle energy in the body. So you might begin to notice where and if you're feeling this. This particular mudra directs more energy actually to the front of the torso. And it's thought to create both an equal relationship between relaxation and ease, as well as alertness. And this particular mudra opens us up to new possibilities is the energetic signature of this particular hand position. It opens us to new possibility. So stay here just a couple moments longer, landing with whatever's already showing up for you in your body, in your mind, in your heart. And slowly releasing this Usha's Mudra as you bring your hands together into a different Mudra, palms right in front of the heart, thumbs touching the sternum, sternum lifting towards the thumbs. I'm going to start today by opening our voices to the sound of Om. So we'll chant the sound Om one time today. There's always four syllables, ah, ooh, mm. fourth syllable is the silence that comes after. So we'll take a nice deep breath in and then exhale, release all of that air, really let it go. And I encourage you to pause for a moment at the bottom of the breath in stillness. We'll inhale to chant. Ah, Big breath in, big breath out as you bow in the direction of your hands and your heart. We'll slowly release our hands, gently lift the head and blink the eyes open. All right. Hey, welcome. So we're going to come to all fours and we will find you a spot here. <laughs> I think we can. Actually, yeah, I can get you right in here. So starting on all fours, you're going to need to find just a spot to slide your bolster and all those props I asked you to get off to the side. You can certainly uh, unroll one of your blankets if you have tender knees and you want something underneath your knees. So as we start on all fours, we're starting in nonlinear movement. So if you're new to this practice, it's a somatic-based practice where on all fours, you're just letting the body move. This is not a yoga pose. Uh, this is not any, you can't do it wrong, essentially. The two suggestions are to close the eyes so you get out of comparison. And the second suggestion is to keep moving the whole time.
I love this practice to start any class that I teach because it sort of impacts us on so many levels. First thing is it asks us to really drop in and feel our body and how it wants to move. It's also a great mirror for us. What's happening already so soon as we start? How are we feeling? What are we noticing being held in our body? You might notice how the breath is either really present for you or not so present. Again, there's not a right or a wrong, but noticing how the breath might also inform what's going on. And then in particular, because today we're working with the goddess Lakshmi, the energy of Lakshmi, which again is beauty, auspiciousness, pleasure, kindness. Could you begin to move in a way that actually feels really good to you? So sometimes I notice I'll find where I have pain or tension and I'll just work that edge. Whereas today I'm wondering if we could focus a little bit more on just moving in a way that feels good. As we stay here for about one more minute, if you haven't already brought some flowing movement into your hips and your pelvis, I encourage you to do that. Start to really stir up the pelvis and the hips. And then from here, if this feels good to you, start to work your way into a downward facing dog. And from this downward facing dog, continue to move in a way that is exploratory and curious and feels good to you. and let your pelvis bounce a little bit or your pelvis sway side to side. And then eventually slowly lower your knees all the way down to the mat and widen the knees all the way towards the edges of the mat. Big toes touch, hips back towards heels, forehead to floor. Now we really make that solid, steady, committed connection to our breath. So beginning to work with what we would call the ujjayi breath, that ocean sounding breath in the back of the throat. You can certainly let your head roll a little side to side, massage your forehead. 
might feel good to open your mouth and do a nice big ha sound. And stay here for two more breaths. As you inhale, feel the body really filling up. Think about the exhale as a chance for you to release or blow out or let go of that which is maybe blocking your capacity to be in deeper connection to beauty and abundance and pleasure and joy. And then after that second exhale, when you're ready, make your way back up to downward facing dog. And take the feet so wide that again, the feet are towards the edges of the mat. So from down dog, we're swaying the hips from left to right. Starting to free up even that sacral area, sacred bone. And then as maybe the hips keep swaying side to side, begin to walk your hands backwards towards your feet. So you arrive in Uttanasana at the back of the mat. And from here, shake out your head a little bit. You could buzz your lips a couple times. Move your jawline. We hold so much tension in that jawline. You could release that a little bit. And then with those nice wide feet, bend the knees. And with an inhale, stretch the arms forward as you slowly rise all the way up to standing. Look up towards your hands, draw the palms together and bring them down right in front of the heart. Slowly release your hands, bring your feet together, walk towards the front of the mat. So we'll start from the front of the mat. And if you're in the front row, you could be in the middle of the mat. We'll work through some sun salutes. I'm going to start with a different mudra, a Bayavruta mudra. So the left hand is cupped underneath the navel, and the right hand is cupped right at shoulder height. And this is called the gesture of fearlessness. Lakshmi was quite fearless, and she has actually four hands, but one of them is held in this gesture of fearlessness. So we sort of step into some uh, power when we work with Lakshmi. All right, so feet are hip distance width apart, strong legs, lifted heart, soft gaze or eyes closed. And again, when we work with mudra, it's subtle, but this particular mudra, there's both a fierceness and a softness. And this is a really powerful, uh, sort of feels like competing energy, but actually works really well together. You're both fierce and soft. Right, let's take a nice deep breath in. Exhale, stay here, continuing to hold this mudra. We're going to inhale again. Exhale, release the mudra, arms down to the side of the body, and then inhale, sweep the arms up. And on the exhale, fold forward into Uttanasana. As you inhale this time, look up halfway, extend that heart forward. And as you exhale, fold back into yourself. And from here, step your way back to downward facing dog. Fingers are spread nice and wide. Hands are pressing down. As you press your hands down, you can really feel that spine grow longer. Sit bones lifting up towards the sky. On an inhale, stretch the left leg up into the sky. And on an exhale, step the left foot through the hands into a deep lunge. Beautiful. From this deep lunge, drop the back knee down to the mat and walk the left foot way off to the edge of the mat. Turn your toes out. Working our way down into a humble pose or staying upright and letting the pelvis move. So Lots of variations here. You can be all the way down on your forearms. You can stay upright, but really getting very quickly into the hips and the pelvis. The element we work with in the hips and the pelvis is water. 
goddess we're working with is Lakshmi, all about flow. So now that you are in humble pose, noticing where there's tension, where there's tightness. I'm gonna encourage you if you find those areas where you feel a lot of constriction or a lot of resistance, you might utilize that breath on a big exhale, maybe a big ha sound, blow out some of that tension. And then watching yourself, what little pulses can do or movement side to side to free up some of the deep clenching. There's um, sort of my study of somatics. We hold a lot of control issues in our pelvis. We clench and hold a lot deep in the hips, the pelvic region. So what kind of energy could we free up there today? It's a creative energy for sure that lives in the pelvis. All right, taking a nice deep breath in. On an exhale, lift the torso up, walk that left foot back towards the center of the mat, lift the back knee, deep lunge. And then step back through downward facing dog. Take a moment to walk it out a little bit. Feel that left side. Just notice what you just accomplished on the other side. And then when you're ready, inhale right leg up into the sky. And as you exhale, that right foot steps through. Deep lunge. Back knee lowers down to the mat. Take the right foot way off to the right. Turn those toes out. And then explore this side, either on the forearms or staying upright. But allowing that pelvis to move, maybe circles, maybe pulses. Feel free to close those eyes. Sometimes when our eyes shut, we can shut out competing influences in the external world and we can really drop in. We want to see how deeply we can feel, whether it's sensation in the body, whether it's feelings that are just right under the surface. And essentially, we want to quiet down our thinking mind, our critical, analytical, judging, criticizing mind, and see if we can tap a little bit more into feeling. So stay here for two more breaths. And again, use the exhale as a way to blow out whatever might be blocking for you more abundance, more beauty, more harmonious feelings. And after that second exhale, lifting back up through deep lunge, and stepping back to down dog. Make whatever movements here feel good to your body. Again, it could be walking out your dog, bending one knee and then the other. It could be letting the pelvis bounce. On an inhale, flow forward to plank pose. So shoulders are either over the wrist or slightly forward of the wrist. On an exhale, lift those hips up and back to dog. We'll do this again. Inhale forward. We pause here for a moment. Really feel strength, stability. Exhale back to dog. And then inhale forward once again, this time lowering all the way down onto the belly. And as you lower onto the belly, take your hands off the mat. Take your feet wide. Come up. So this is sort of like nonlinear movement, but from Cobra Pose. So close the eyes and let yourself just really sway and move. You can twist looking back towards your feet. You can buzz those lips again. And shake out your head. Let your spine shimmy side to side. Again, with the eyes closed, you don't have to worry what this looks like. Can you move in such a way that again feels good? Frees up some space in the spine or allows you to release, again, whatever is being held there that might be limiting you somehow.
And then on an inhale, lift to sort of your highest potential here. And then on an exhale, lower down very slowly and let your forehead touch the mat. Your hands slide back in alignment with your chest. And we move back up to all fours. We're back to all fours. We might have to get a little bit creative about how we do this, but it's definitely possible. We're gonna take our left leg out to the side. So you're gonna see an incoming foot, which means you might need to come forward on your mat or back on your mat, but we'll be able to figure this out. So it's our left leg that's out to the left. <laughs> you're getting really creative over there. I love it. And we're gonna just move forward and back. I sort of like down dog arms here, meaning that my wrists are forward of my shoulders. And what you'll notice as you move forward and back with your pelvis or even start to make some circular movements with the pelvis is that we start to get quite deep in that left inner thigh, inner knee. We sometimes call it the inseam of the leg. And there's usually a lot of um, sensation here. And it's often not a part of our body that we think about a lot. So we're doing bringing some consciousness in there, nice big stretch. It's also a really nice way to start to open inner groin, inner hip. Right, and then slowly bring left knee back in alignment with right knee. We're back, all fours. And again, just look behind you. We're gonna take that left leg all the way back, but I wanna make sure you're not gonna take out the person behind you, so yeah. All right, so left leg is straight behind you. Draw the belly up. So pull that navel up towards the spine and then maybe extend your opposite arm forward, your right arm forward. Keep your gaze down towards the floor so you're, Neck stays in nice alignment here. And then if you want a challenge, you might bend your left knee, sweep your right hand around to catch the foot. If you can find that foot, kick the foot into the hand and then get just a little bit of a twist. That navel heart spinning up to the right. We'll take a breath in and then exhale, come back to all fours. Close the eyes and just shake it out a little bit. Release that side. Inhale, tilt the pelvis way forward, lift through the heart, cow pose. As you exhale, round like a cat, tuck the pelvis under, tuck the chin. Do this one more time, inhale, pelvis tilts, heart lifts. Now this time as you round and exhale, stick your tongue out, big ha sound like a lion's breath. Beautiful. We come back to all fours, neutral spine. Now right leg is coming out. Again, you might need to get creative. So right leg way out to the side. Yeah, we get to know all of the people around us here. And then I ask you to go back in. <laughs> Close your eyes, go back in. So let your pelvis again move in a way that feels good to you. Again, we don't often access right inner thigh, right inner knee. And we are trying to find fluidity, a fluidness, a flow. Can definitely use the breath as a way to continue to ground you. That exhale is always an opportunity to blow out intensity, tension. So stretch the hands forward, stretch the pelvis way back. And then release right knee back in alignment with left knee. We're back to all fours. Now that right leg extends all the way back behind you. Toes of the right foot are spread. Navel pulls up so you get um, a rooted tailbone, we might say. It also connects you to your core. Opposite arm forward, left arm forward. You can certainly stay here if you want to add that quad stretch. You bend the right knee, sweep left hand around, reach for the foot. If you find the foot, kick the foot into the hand. Let that left knee uh, lift up, right knee lift up just a little more. And a little twist, navel heart up to the sky. 
we'll take a breath and then exhale, let it go back to all fours. Again, just shake it out a little bit. Inhale, tilt the pelvis, big lifting of the heart, big stretching of the front body. Exhale, round like a cat, tuck under, look in. One more time, inhale, pelvis tilt, heart lifts. This time, exhale as you round, stick that tongue out, big ha. That's it, back to neutral spine. Now walk the hands, one hand print forward on your mat, curl your toes under, come back up to downward facing dog. Back up to down dog. Let's take a moment to move in any way that feels good to you. You have full permission to do what feels good to you. And if what feels good to you is to hang out in child's pose or shavasana for the whole class, do that, right? So listen in to what your body and your mind and your heart need. Always follow yourself. All right. We are going to walk our hands back once again to meet our feet back into forward fold, Uttanasana. Then take a moment to let your head shake out. Let your jawline soften. Again, those lips might want to buzz a little bit. Spine might want to shake a little bit. Bending the knees slightly with an inhale, sweep the arms, come all the way up. Now with your hands together above the head, interlace your fingers and turn palms towards sky. And take a breath in. On the exhale, lean on over to the left. Inhale back to center, exhale, lean to the right. Inhale back to center, look up, palms together. Now we draw hands down, thumbs touch in at the third eye, thumbs touch in at the mouth, and then thumbs finally rest right in front of the heart. Use the hands, stay where you are. We're gonna to start to, well, let's shake a little bit. We're just gonna bounce and shake just a little bit. And then we're gonna tap. I love to tap. So this is not necessarily from the yoga tradition, but we are working with meridians of the body. So we're opening up again, these subtle energy channels. So we're starting at the heart and it's just gentle tapping. I'll lead you here so you can keep your eyes half masked or your eyes closed if that allows you to tap into sensation a little more. And you will find tenderness. So we'll, we usually typically find some tender spots in the body as we tap. I would encourage you to give those areas just a little bit more attention, a little more tapping, a little more consciousness. All right, from the heart, you can take it down either arm. And now we lightly pat all the way down one of the arms. Once you get to the hand, you pop your hands just a little bit and then flip the arm, tap up the, pat up the back of the arm. And then we come right back to the heart. So again, tapping at the heart. We're tapping uh, sternum area, collarbones. I say this is a good area for immune system bolstering. We'll take it down the other arm now, pat, pat, pat down opposite arm. Once you get to the hands, clap the hands for a little bit. Lift the arm, tap up the back of the arm, and then we're back at the heart, always coming back to the heart. We could also call Lakshmi, not only does she really rule sacral area, but definitely heart space. She loves abundance, love. Uh, tap up the throat and neck. So little taps up the throat and then move around to the back of the neck. As you move towards the back of the neck, you're going to Tuck your chin just a little bit and see if you can really tap that region where the back of the neck meets the skull. There's usually a lot of tender spots back there. Tap around to the temples, to the crown of the head. Come down through the forehead, the jawline, the face, open the mouth a little bit. I am open to abundance. I'm open to pleasure. I'm open to joy. Take it back to the heart and then we're gonna bring those arms around towards the back. And again, now it's a little more of a pat down 
the back, into the kidney region, into the hips. And start to fold forward as you start to tap down the legs. And tap up the inseam of the legs or the backs of the legs. Good. Coming all the way back up, patting the belly, solar plexus. Ah, back to the heart. And then we drop hands coming into full mountain pose, palms face forward. And just take a moment to feel. There's usually a, a lot more sensation, a lot more vibration, a lot more energy flow. Feels like a wake up call to me often when I do that tapping sequence. So I'd like you to take just a moment to feel that and be with that. It's really powerful to awaken our systems. Now let's take this into another sun salute, bringing hands together in front of the heart into Lotus Mudra. Thumbs pointer, or thumbs and pinkies touching, middle three fingers are open, just like a lotus. Inhaling, lifting that lotus into the sky. As you exhale, maintain the Lotus Mudra as you draw your hands down, midline of the body, bowing into your forward fold. Eventually hands touch down to the earth and head releases. Inhale, look up halfway. Exhale, fold. Good. Now from here, walk your hands forward. You're at the back of the mat. So walk your hands forward into downward facing dog. And once you find your down dog again, move in whatever way feels good to you. We're seeing if we can align with sensations, movements, breath that allows us to feel good. Now on an inhale this time, lift the right leg up into the sky. And as you exhale, step that right foot through your hands into a deep lunge. Once you arrive, lift up into a high lunge. So it might help to walk your right foot off to the right. We'll start with hands on the pelvis. And with hands on the pelvis, we can start to get really grounded and steady. Pull the shoulders back and allow your sternum to lift. We're gonna inhale arms up into the sky. Now, as you exhale, bend the elbows, pull the elbows down and let that heart really lift. If you'd like on this next inhale, straighten your front leg. Add a little balance challenge here as you exhale, sink into a bent front knee, pull those elbows down, lift through the heart. Again, inhale, beautiful, exhale. One more of these, make it sweet. Allow yourself to really feel how good it is to open the body in such a systematic way. Now bow forward, hands come to the earth, step back to down dog. Inhale forward to plank. And then in a fluid movement, flow back to down dog. So your hands and feet can stay in the same place. As you inhale, flow forward to plank. Pause, feel that strength. Exhale back to dog. One more time, inhale flowing forward. As you exhale, lower all the way down to the belly. You can either take an up dog, which is straight arms, tops of the thighs lifted, or you can take a cobra where the thighs stay on the ground, hands are flat on the earth, shoulders back. You'll transition eventually to down dog in your own space and time, but take your time moving at the pace or spending the amount of time in that pose that feels good to your system. We'll all eventually find our way back to downward facing dog. And once you do, again, move in such a way that feels good to your body. See if you can come back to the sound of the breath in the back of the throat. Now on an inhale, left leg lifts up into the sky and on an exhale, step the left foot through your hands into a deep lunge. In preparation for coming up to a high lunge, you might walk your left foot off to the left. So you have a nice wide, a little bit of a wider stance rising up, hands to pelvis. 
grounding pelvis down, drawing the shoulders back and letting your sternum lift a little more. Inhale, arms up. As you exhale, bend those elbows and let the sternum lift a little more. As you inhale, this time we'll straighten front leg. As you exhale, bending into that front knee. Two more of these, inhale, lift up. Exhale, big ha sounds. One more. Good, exhale. With all the air blown out, take an inhale, fold forward, deep lunge, and then step back foot forward to meet the front foot. Uttanasana, forward fold. Shake out the head a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let yourself land, tune in. Bend your knees with an inhale, sweep the arms forward, come all the way up. Exhale, hands down in front of the heart. Good, open the middle three fingers again into the Lotus Mudra. We're gonna work our way to Rikshasana which is a balance pose. We're gonna take it into a sequence after that, but for some people balancing on a mat is hard. You have a really cushy mat too. So you might, I know, <laughs> you might get onto a wood floor. So if your challenge, if balances feel challenging, just step off your mat to a wood floor. All right, so we're starting with that Lotus Mudra. Remember Lotus Mudra is held right in front of the heart, middle three fingers are open. And the gaze is actually dropping down into the center of the lotus. So let's just get there for a moment. Lotus mudra is a beautiful mudra to open the heart, to soften the heart. Now we're gonna try to maintain this mudra as we work our way into tree pose. So weight is starting to transfer into the left foot, lifting the right foot up to the ankle, to the calf. You're gonna have to release mudra for a moment if you're gonna pull that right foot up towards your upper inner thigh. Yeah, beautiful. Pressing the foot into the leg, the leg into the foot. Feel your tailbone anchor you down and your navel pull in. We're still maintaining lotus in front of the heart. And if you feel steady here, you might lift that lotus up towards the sky. For most steadfastness, gaze down towards the earth. But if you feel really steady here, you might lift your gaze to horizon level, or you might lift your gaze all the way up towards the sky and add just a little mini back bend here through the upper back. You breathe in and exhale, let's come out of it. I was gonna take this into a sequence and I'm like, no, let's just land. Take that left leg and shake it out a little bit. Usually a lot of sensation that happens. All right, give you another option to step onto a wood floor. If you're like, it was hard, get onto the wood floor. I'm actually gonna give you another option too, because I love to practice this way. You could um, actually, let's all turn around and look out those windows because you can actually see trees out there. <laughs> and when you see a tree, you can connect with the rootedness. Trees are so beautiful because they're both rooted and they're rising up. So I really love to practice tree pose looking at a tree. So maybe you choose the favorite tree out there that you wanna connect to. All right, feel your feet hip distance width apart. And let's bring our hands back together in that Lotus Mudra in honor of Lakshmi, the goddess of abundance. So thumbs are resting on the sternum, heel of the hand touches, pinky fingers touch. All right, now start to feel your weight shift into your right foot. We're gonna lift the left foot up ankle, calf, or maybe you're gonna take it above the knee to the upper inner thigh. Once you have the foot placed, now think about your pelvis, tailbone anchors down, you're really rooted. And because you're so rooted, you can lengthen up through your spine. You might be really gazing at one of those beautiful trees. If you feel steady here, you could lift that lotus up into the sky. It's like an offering, offering that up. Keep letting the heart lift. Keep feeling the rootedness of this pose as well as this expansive lift. Let's take a breath in. You guys are so beautiful. 
Pull those palms together down midline of the body. Release the left foot towards the earth. Shake out the right side. Good. You can turn back around, face me. Did it help to look at a tree? I know it helps. I don't know. I mean, it's I, we're connecting to nature. I think that's it. But I love to see the trees. All right. So you're back at the front of the mat. We're going to do one more sequence. Inhale, arms up into the sky. All right. Exhale, fold forward. All right. As you inhale, extend the heart forward. As you exhale, big open mouth ujjayi. So big class down as you fold. We're gonna do that two more times. So stoking a little more heat here. Inhale, look up halfway. Exhale, big ha. Good, one more, last one, inhale. Big exhale as you fold, releasing this past year. In fact, as you stay in the forward fold, shake out the head, any tension, any stress, any worry that you're still carrying, can you actually leave some of it here? So you walk out with a little bit more of a lightness of being. All right, from here, step your way directly back to downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg into the sky. As you exhale, step that right foot through your hands into a deep lunge. Now from here, I should have warned you all of this before we started, find a block if you can and place that block off the front corner of your mat. All right, so from deep lunge, turn your back foot down and inhale, rise up. Virabhadrasana two, warrior two. Practicing lots of poses that open our hips and our pelvis. And so here, if you track that right knee over to the right a little bit more, you get a nice opening in that right hip. Feel your left foot really anchoring you down and turn your palms to face up. So we have that receptive openness to abundance. Let's take a breath in, exhale, stay. Maybe come a little deeper into that front thigh, that right knee again, tracking to the right, inhale, Good, exhale, stay. Now on this next exhale, we're gonna transition to a new pose. Inhale, on this exhale, transition back down to a deep lunge. You've got a block off the front corner of the mat. You're gonna step your back foot one step forward. Hand is on that blue block. Take your hand off to the right, lift the left leg up. Ardha Chandrasana, half moon pose. You can start with your left hand on your waist. Spread the toes of that left foot. Draw your top shoulder back. Maybe the top arm lifts. That's it, really good. Breathe in. Can you feel a little joy here? Yeah, I know. Exhale, fold forward into Uttanasana. Forward fold, just at the front of the mat. You did it, beautiful, shake it out. You have another side to go, but we got one side down. Inhale, look up halfway. So put your heart forward out in the world. Exhale, big ha, mm -hmm. as you fold back into yourself and then step your way back to downward facing dog. So just take a moment to check in, feel yourself, move in any way that you need to. We open the body systematically through the poses, the breath, the mudras, all of it, so we can move closer to our most vibrant self. So let's move into second side. Inhale, left leg into the sky. As you exhale, step that left foot through your hands, deep lunge. Turn your back foot down and rise up. So we start in warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Turn the palms towards the sky. Check into your left knee, move it to the left, yes. Keep rooting that right foot down. Inhale, lengthen up through your crown. As you exhale, maybe come a little deeper into that front thigh, but that left knee keeps opening out to the left. Inhale again. Now on this exhale, windmill arms down either side of the front foot. So you're back in a deep lunge and then your back foot steps forward one step. Take your hand to a block, left hand to block. Lift the right leg up. I know I'm really close to you, I'm sorry. <laughs> Right leg is straight, toes are spread. Right shoulder is pulling back. Feel your navel start to twist up to the right. Top arm might lift as well. Really good. Take a breath in. 
And then mindfully exit right foot, dropping down in alignment with the left foot. Shake the head out. Buzz those lips. Notice your open hips. We're gonna open them even more here. As you inhale, look up halfway. Exhale, stick your tongue out, big ha, as you fold. And then step your way back to downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg into the sky. And as you exhale, bring your right knee forward into pigeon pose, Ekapada Raja Kapatasana pose. Left knee, right knee is way off to the side. We're gonna start upright to begin with. So as we start upright, you can walk your hands back to really get nice long spine. And think about your tailbone anchoring down your belly point and you might even be able to lift your arms up. Feel that balance. All right, take a breath in. Now keeping long spine, now slowly come forward, mindfully come forward, forearms onto the floor. And then we started today with Usha's Mudra. This is where your fingers were lightly interlaced. So you could do this right here in pigeon pose. This is the, it's called the gesture of the dawn. We're opening to new possibility. All right, so we're gonna stay here. Attempting to be as receptive and as open as we can. So we're releasing tension, clenching in the pelvis. Again, you might uh, feel a desire to let that pelvis shake a little side to side, front to back. Make sure that your jaw is soft here. It's so common to like clench up Clench those teeth here. Let your jaw be really soft and your breath be present. So you're hearing the sound of your own breath. How can you open to more abundance, more joy, more beauty in your own life? So stay for two more breaths and on the exhale again, it's as if you're blowing away that which might be blocking the abundance, the joy, the love, the goodness that's surrounding you. Really yoga is a practice of subtraction. We're not usually adding anything to ourselves because the tradition would say we're already whole, but we do have to remove the blocks and the tension and the stories that limit us somehow. All right, when you're ready, transition back through down dog. <clears throat> so you're coming back through down dog and really take a moment to feel, feel your body, feel that right side and all that just uh, changed in your system. And then we'll move into the left side when you're ready. Inhale, left leg into the sky. As you exhale, bring that left knee forward off to the side. Walk your hands back for a moment again, just so you get that nice long spine. And by the way, if this is hard on you, you can always do this supine as well. When you're ready, I'll show you supine for those of you who wanna do that. Ankle crossed over knee, bringing the knees in. For those of you in the other pigeon position, you come down onto your forearms. And you might choose to work with Usha's mudra, fingers interlaced, lightly interlaced. And welcoming life more positively, being open to all the new possibilities. We're on the cusp of this new year. So you can feel potentially that change in the air. So it is a good time of year to reflect on what we wanna leave behind, what we wanna invite in. We're going to do more of that tomorrow morning at nine if you want to join me again, different class. But please stay here in this pigeon working with your breath and using two more breaths, two more conscious breaths, just exhale to really 
just set the intention. I'm blowing out that which might be blocking my capacity to feel more joy, to receive more abundance, to have more pleasure in my life. And then when you're ready, transition back out through down dog. It's the last down dog of the day. So do whatever feels good to your body. If you like one more vinyasa, you could take another vinyasa. Again, moving in such a way that supports your system. And feel those open hips. Goddess Lakshmi loves open hips. Feel those open, that open pelvis, more freedom, more space there. And then when you're ready, let's all meet in a child's pose where the knees come down, the knees are wide, big toes touch. Again, hips to heels. Another variation that might feel good here is to bring the knees a little closer together and wrap your arms around reaching for the backs of the heels. So you're a little bit more of a compressed um, pose here. It's a really nice way to bring the system down. Right, and slowly on an inhale, walk your knees or walk your hands back towards your knees. Come all the way upright. Okay, we're gonna use all those props that I asked you to get at the beginning. So first and foremost, grab one of your blankets. I'm so not used to teaching when it's dark. I'm like, what is happening? It's getting dark. I'm usually here at nine in the morning. So, all right, so you're gonna open one of your blankets up and then uh, roll it the long way. So we're gonna do a nice long blanket roll. We're working our way into Supta Baddha Konasana, but it's gonna be a really supported one because we're gonna stay for a while. This is such a lovely pose to stay in. So once you have that long kind of cylinder blanket roll, you can put it off to the side. And if you're at home and you don't have any props, totally okay, you don't need props for this. If you have them though, it's a bonus. Then bolster's gonna go the long way on the mat. And you could, I don't have a block nearby. I'm gonna spill yours just for a minute. You could slide a block under the bolster. So you have just like a little angled bolster. It's not necessary per se, but if you, um, like people who fall asleep easily or you're afraid you're gonna snore or you don't wanna fall asleep, a little elevation under there can be nice. All right. So far, so good. And you can go either direction. So your head could go that direction. Your head could go, it doesn't matter to me. Back of the sacrum, sacred bone is right up next to that bolster. Then the blanket roll comes and you place it over your feet. You take the edges of the roll and you wrap that around to the outer thigh. So you get a nice support for your legs. And I'll come around and help Make sure everyone's got this. Now, this is the last key thing here. We want to have tall spines. So as you, it's almost like you're pressing your fingers down and lengthening up as much as you can. Then you're coming all the way back. Hands can be on the abdomen. Arms can be at the side of the body. And allow yourself to move and adjust as much as you need to. I want you to feel good here. So if, if something doesn't feel good, make an adjustment. Don't just tell yourself, oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine.
All right, take a nice deep breath in and then exhale, let yourself arrive. Just let yourself arrive deeper in your body, arrive with whatever sensations or feelings or thoughts that this pose might evoke. This is a big opener for the pelvis, which we've been opening this whole class. So big opening for hips and pelvis, inner groins, inner thighs. This is also a big opener for your chest and your heart. So you might really feel your shoulder blades draw underneath you, feel that little bit of lift through the sternum and the chest. You feel your eyes settling down into their sockets. You feel your breath uh, beginning to quiet and soften. You might still be working with a little bit of ujjayi breath, that ocean ha sounding breath, but it's much more subtle. It's much more soft. And then as you stay resting in this very receptive posture, we might practice what it's like to open to more gentleness, more joy, more sweetness. The pelvis that we've been working on this whole class in Sanskrit is called Svadhisthana, which means sweetness. It's the seed of sweetness, pleasure. So feel really the support of the earth beneath you. You're supported by stable foundation here. From this stable foundation, pelvis can soften and open. Heart can soften and open. And you might reflect here on your own relationship to abundance and joy. How does this feel to you in this chapter of your life? And then because when we do these practices, we start to align more with our own wisdom centers and you have a wisdom center, by the way, in your pelvis and a wisdom center in your heart and a wisdom center in your third eye. So we start to align with our own wisdom. You could even ask yourself, what might I need to be able to experience more abundance, more joy, more pleasure? Or what might I need to let go of to receive more joy, pleasure, abundance? Sometimes answers, feelings, guidance can arrive for us.
So if this particular posture, Supta Baddha Konasana, feels really sweet to you, like you can feel how this is exactly where you need to stay, you might choose to stay here for our last five, six minutes together. But if you prefer to transition to Shavasana, just bringing your knees together, rolling off through one side, you can slide the bolster out. You could still use the bolster in Shavasana, placing it underneath your knees for some low back support. Placing it on your torso for a little more grounding or just stay in Supta Baddha Konasana if this feels good. This is your chance to tap in and ask, don't overthink it. What is going to give me the most pleasure, the most opening, staying here or settling into Shavasana? And then the only real cue here is to stay open, stay receptive. There are so many gifts that arrive at the end of a yoga practice when we move into rest. There's deep abundance that come from the practice. So just stay open to the rest in the body. You can release the breath. And staying open to any guidance, wisdom that your high self might want to offer to you.
Now let your awareness come back to your breath and just follow a sweet breath in and follow that sweet breath out. And then before really moving the body, just take a moment to again, really feel. So where are you at right now? Feel sensation, notice thoughts, notice any emotion. And then let the body start to awaken in its own gradual way. So there's no rush. In fact, you can be curious about how the body wants to initiate some movement. You could take a nice big stretch, stretching the arms, stretching the feet. Eventually, you can roll off through one side, maybe off of the bolster. And take your sweet time. We're not needing to rush. In fact, we don't want to rush out of these spaces we drop into. We want to move consciously in and consciously out. So take your time. And then when you eventually do come up to your seat, Sit on a bolster, on a block, just elevate your hips just a little bit. I'm going to end with that lotus mudra again. Heel of the hand, thumbs and pinkies touching middle, three fingers open. So when we do practices like today that align us with Lakshmi, the goddess of abundance, pleasure, beauty, Shri, auspiciousness, they call it. There is a radiance and a lightness of being that we begin to perhaps feel in our system. So you might notice if there is just a little more lightness in your body, mind, and a little more radiance, almost as if you are exuding light from the inside out. My encouragement to students, whenever you leave, we're in such sort of sacred, safe place here in the studio. When you leave, you know, can you bring some of what you've received from this practice and bring it into the world? Be, be the light that this world needs. All right, bringing palms together now, can bow in the direction of your hands and your heart. Thank you for joining me. The light in me honors that same light in each of you. Namaste. Looks like we should just have a little slumber party here. <laughs> the lights are down. There's like a light that turn off, like right as we all, it was, it was all this crazy timing going on. So thank you all. I will turn on a little bit of light, but not too bright. So you can actually see what you're doing when you're putting your things away. Thank you all for joining me. And if anyone wants to come tomorrow morning at nine, we're going to do like a big twist practice. We're going to twist out 2023 in preparation for the new year to come in. So there'll be another sort of deep, contemplative practice with lots of twist if you want to join so thanks. thanks everyone for being here thanks everyone online for being here as well it's funny it was a sunshine all week and then i get to this and like there's yeah. some kind of i know yeah why are you doing this? And thanks for coming online today. There are lots of you here today. Appreciate you all of you being here. Julia, I love that you're in Belize. Yeah.
Okay. 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 Okay.